every single week we do the great search brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, for helping us do this show and so much more. We got a question on one of our last great searches from yes. Aaron. We know Aaron Robot Girl, and Aaron says, what would you recommend for part selection when it has less than 100 in stock? How can you tell if the part is being discontinued or just waiting more to come in? Really like the series. Find it super valuable to learn these tips and tricks. Keep it up. Wait, Ada, what's okay. the answer? Uh, well, we're going to cover that today because coincidentally, maybe, uh, the part that I'm going to be searching for isn't in stock. Um, and so let's see how to... Well, first off, we'll find some alternatives, um, but we'll also see to figure out... Is this part ever coming back in stock? Um, you, you know, you don't always know, right? Sometimes parts are discontinued. Um, I'll give you some, some tips and also how to tell when it's going to come back in stock. It used to be a little easier to find out on DigiKey, but you can still find that information if you're sneaky. So okay. let's do this thing. Take your time. Okay, so we're going to get a CAN bus transceiver for the SAM E51 feather board that I've designed. Um, the SAM E51 is a 3.3 volt microcontroller. CAN bus uh, is really ancient. It's like MIDI-ish. It's like this very old, simple, but very popular and effective industrial uh, protocol for sending and receiving messages. Um, there's like extended versions. There's like high-speed versions, whatnot. Um, but basically it uses five volt differential signals. I'm still not 100% sure why sometimes you can get away with three volt differential signals. But it seems like everybody kind of wants, especially if you're doing automotive, you really want to do uh, plus or minus five volts. Um, that said, your microcontroller is going to be three volts. So it's one of those like three volt data, but then out here it's um, five volt data. So you want a chip that can kind of handle both, you know, like peanut butter and jelly go great together. Uh, three volt one side, five volt on the other, keep them safe, but also have that nice big differential voltage so you can um, uh, we send and receive messages even in very noisy situations like in a car. So the first thing I do when I want to spec a part that goes with another part is I actually look at um, the eval board because the eval board, now first off, you're, it's not unusual the eval board is going to use parts that are from that company, so it's not necessarily always the best part, but it's at least a part that you know is going to work. Um, so in this case, you go to um, your know, microchip site, they have for this chip the SAM E54 Explain Pro. The SAM E54 is like even better than the SAM E51, but it has Ethernet, but basically it's the same chip. Um, just has this extra peripheral. And in documents, you can download um, the user guide, which I did. And uh, the, uh, one of the most frustrating things about CAN is like searching for the word CAN is very difficult because the word CAN is used in English a lot. However, um, you get eventually to this section where they talk about it and they say, okay, it's connected to an ATA6561 physical layer transceiver. That's the thing that converts the you know, RX and TX 3 volt signal to the plus or minus 5 volts. Like um, It's like dominant recessive or something. There, there's some wording that they use. Um, so this is their chip. So again, not too surprising. Uh, this interface controller is um, from the same company. That's, that's not a bad thing. I mean, I, I'm not against it. I, I sometimes mix and match in a design, but there's nothing wrong with also just going with the supplier themselves. Um, and then in um, these documents, you can look at the data sheet, high speed CAN transceiver, um, communication speed up to five megabits per second, um, one thing that you'll want to, oh, I don't think I have the SAM E51 data sheet open. Hold on. I forgot. But um, the SAM E51 data sheet um, implies that the CAN bus controller is, uh, it can do like a one megabit per second, or it can do up to 10 megabit per second. So it's like, you can do quite high speeds. Um, so that's something, oh yeah, wait. So this is the, this is the day sheet. I did have it open. Um, yes, if you find the CAN bus controller, it can do CAN FD, which if you like search through 2000 pages, 
it does say somewhere like, oh, it can do up to like 10 megabit. Um, and this transceiver can do up to five megabits. So that means it's just like, okay, if you're, if you're gonna find an equivalent one, you wanna have it about that speed capability. Um, the other thing that you'll see is basically the voltage, um, sorry, the, the protective voltage input, like how much voltage it can handle before failure. It's usually like 60 to 70 volts, um, depending on your uh, you know, industrial requirements that might be important to you. Um, there's two package types. These tend to come in SOIC. And um, there's two very similar, but not quite the same uh, pinouts. So you'll notice that they have TX and ground and VCC and RX and then standby, can H, can L. And then this one has like not used, I don't know what NCL is. And this has VIL. VIL is on the 6561 and that is the version that can handle um, three to five volts logic. So that's what you want. We want the one that's the 6561. So you have to be careful. Sometimes part numbers, they're shared in the same data sheet, but that doesn't mean they're equivalent. Um, this one in particular, we definitely only want the ATA 6561. So uh, knowing that, let's go back to DigiKey. Don't forget to sign up and get some ESP32 S2 chips, the FR01 and the FH chip that just came out. Um, and then in transceivers, we can see, uh, yay, there's transceivers. There's the um, ATA6561, that's what we wanted. However, some bad news. This version, the DFN, the small chip version is in stock. You can see by mousing over, it's got little, it's like teeny, it doesn't have the pin sticking out. And my design is kind of already done and it's for SOIC. So let's go go here. Okay, well, you know, we can look for an equivalent and maybe I'll, I'll show an equivalent uh, how to do that really quickly. But you'll see there's zero in stock and like, you know, I'm impatient. Especially here's another thing to watch out for. You see this, the manufacturer lead time, 30 weeks. now. Right now, at this moment in time, uh, every manufacturer is having like totally nutty lead times because uh, all over Asia there's like lockdowns and like factories aren't open and like things are very like difficult to do um, due, due to like government restrictions for COVID-19. However, um, just because it says that, that's like the worst case if you said I need a billion chips, how long will it take you? They're like, well, we'll, we'll get it to you in 30 weeks. That doesn't mean it's going to take 30 weeks for it to be in stock. So like, watch out for that. It's, it's the max, the min max, right? It's like the, the worst case. So here's what we do. Now it used to be visible here and it's not, but what you can do is you can put like a thousand or a hundred in stock. You add to your cart and then, oh, I already had, I already had some in cart, so it can change this to 100. And then you see here, oops, Sorry, I had a duplicate. It says here it's a back order, and then there's this little thing here that says check lead time. That's the sneaky thing. So click that, and it will tell you when they're expected to be in. So they're expected to be in stock around the end of the year. Now that's also very, it's often quite true. I've I found that the lead times are a good guideline, um, unless there's some like catastrophe that occurs. If they say that they're going to have a shipment to DigiKey on 1231, they're probably going to get it to them at around 1231. So I wouldn't like bet my manufacturing line on it. Like if I absolutely needed to have it, you know, the next day, I wouldn't trust this because, you know, it can vary. There can be shipping delays. There can be a storm. However, you know, it just means like, will this ever be in stock again? Yes. In a couple of weeks. So that's a good thing for me to know if I'm thinking about using this in my design um, when I can get more. So I actually use that tool all the time. Like I'll put stuff in stock that isn't in stock into my cart just to get an idea of like, how long is it, does it take for this to get back into stock? So I'm not, so I can like kind of plan out my manufacturing runs. Like if I have a sensor I want to get and it's out of stock because it's everyone bought it up, when are they, they going to be more? I can do that and I can say like, oh, you know, I don't have to rush my PCB design because they're not going to be in stock until at least, you know, late December, for example. Um, 
So that said, uh, don't forget if you want to get an equivalent part, you can always go down to the product attributes and then um, click the things that you want to match up and you know, don't be too picky, but be specific enough that you can uh, get the item you want. So you want to be an active can transceiver with one RX and one TX. We want that same pinout. Um, the voltage supply and temperature, I'm not gonna click for reasons. However, I do want it to be the same package. And then there's only 40 remaining similar. So that's actually kind of nice. It means I can uh, pick out which ones. Now that AT6561 was five megabit per second. Um, so I might want to select that. And then the voltage supplies, again, those are, don't, don't believe those. Um, because again, there's the, the voltage supply of the CAN transceiver, which is about five volts. And then there's the reference voltage that you'll use for sending data back and forth. Um, and then, uh, so you, you will have to look at the data sheet and then I want uh, the ones only that are in stock. And then um, it looks like there's a couple options I can get from maybe the TGA 1044. I can also be um, uh, less picky about some of these things. Like if I want to, um, for example, instead of protocol, I'll tell you why. There's CAN and there's CAN. Oh, interesting. They selected multiple. There's CAN and there's CAN bus, which like I wish they would be merged together, but they're actually two separate categories for the same thing. Um, and then I can you know sort by price, or I can sort down by stock to see which ones have the most stocks. So there's like a lot of of like these transceivers. The the TJ or um, whatever 1050 ones, those are basically equivalent. And that's actually ended up what I used on my design. One thing that I have started to do, um, I prefer not to buy from Marketplace. I want stuff to come directly to me from DigiKey. Um, and Rochester, it ships from DigiKey. So if you want it to ship at the DigiKey speed, like the way, I don't know, I'm picky about that, um, you can unclick the Marketplace products. And then, um, you know, like this, transceiver is a high-speed transceiver this one's from nxp instead you know obviously microchip won't use this on their dev board because they're going to use microchip however when you go down to the specifications and um the pinout you'll see it's like exactly the same so this pinout is wait is this exactly the same hold on yeah tx uh, tx ground vcc rx TX ground um, BCC RX, and then standby, uh, oops, standby high low VIO, standby high low VIO. So you can you can use this basically as an equivalent drop in replacement. There's a lot of transceivers. Um, to pick the one that has basically the the safety margins you need, um, but you know what I'll probably do is come up with a list of a of a good three or four of these that are equivalent. And that way, as I'm going through manufacture, if one is out of stock, like that AT, you know, ATA series, I can always uh, sub in a TJA 1051 instead. Very wise. Always tell people when they're designing to have multiple sources for chips. I have seen many companies uh, not bankrupt, but get very close because they are waiting for a chip that they couldn't get and they were out of stock for months and months and months. You don't want that to happen to you. Um, it can kill you because if you don't, if you have all but one part to manufacture, you have nothing. That's my wisdom for the day. <laughs> Always make sure you have a backup plan for parts. All right, and that's our this week's great search. Yes.